Hi guys, my name is Anna. I worked and lived in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, located in Central Africa, and it is considered to be a very dangerous country for white people. So, today I will tell you about the precautions that my colleagues and people I met there said I should take, and I will also tell you about my personal experience. Democratic Republic of the Congo, or shortly DRC, is a very beautiful green country, but it is also among the five poorest nations in the world. According to statistics, in the year 2022, nearly 62% of Congolese, which makes around 60 million people, lived on less than $2.15 a day. And about one out of six people live in extreme poverty. So, if you are white, you are considered to be rich in DRC. When I came there, I was said that the country is not safe and that I shouldn't walk on the streets alone because I can be robbed and even kidnapped. Was that exaggeration? I will tell you about my experience. I will start from the beginning. I had a direct flight from Istanbul, Turkey to Kinshasa. And at the Istanbul airport, when I came to the gate and was waiting for the board into our plane, I made a selfie where on the background there were African people. There was a white man standing close to me, he was also going to Kinshasa, and he told me, make sure not to do this in Congo. I was like, why? And he told me that if you are not Congolese, you cannot take photos or videos of other people in Congo. And he said that it's also not allowed to take pictures of the airport or any government buildings, that the police can just confiscate your phone. First I thought that he was exaggerating, and I asked another man, African, who was standing next to him in line, if it is really so, and he said unwillingly that, yeah, this is kind of true. So we had a night flight to Kinshasa, and there were two more people from my company on the same plane. We were met at Kinshasa airport by some local representatives of our company. They told us to wait in the car and that they will get our luggage for us. They walked us to the car and apart from the local driver, there was a policeman with a rifle that our company hired for safety. We waited to get our bags for about one and a half hours. The international airport in Kinshasa is small and people do everything there manually. On the territory of the airport, I saw some beggars and some kids were just sleeping in the grass. I will put videos of Kinshasa City as a background to this video. Our company was renting two big houses for its workers. Everyone had a private room there. And these houses had high fences with barbed wires or glass on top to make sure that no one can get in. Also, there were guards living on the territory of the houses, and there was always one policeman at the gate of the house. They were there to make sure that nobody from the street can enter the territory of the houses. Our company had several cars that were always bringing us to work and back home. Also, if we needed to go to some supermarket or wanted to go to a cafe, we asked the work cars to bring us there and back. Some of my colleagues told me that they never walk in the street, they only go by car. And I talked to some other white people in Kinshasa that would never walk outside, but only went to places by car and accompanied by some local people. Some of my colleagues sometimes walked to the nearest supermarket or to buy fruits not far from the house, but it was only for some short distance. And they said that it's better not to go alone, that you can walk in the streets only at daytime, and that it's better not to take a lot of money with you and even leave your cell phone at home, because there is always a risk that you can be robbed. When it comes to me, I am the type of person that likes exploring new places and I just cannot stay at home all the time. So I did walk alone in the streets in Kinshasa and I never had any bad experience, but still I took some precautions. I walked to some cafes or supermarkets, but still not too far, usually it was a 10 or 20 minutes walk. Almost all people were staring at me. As you can see, very seldom white people walking in the streets there, though there are a lot of foreigners in Kinshasa. Many people were saying, bonjour, bonjour madame, ça va? But nobody ever came up to me and made me uncomfortable. 
Also, taxis, especially motor taxis, would use their horn, beep you a lot, but they do it for local people too, to find customers. Of course, I walked outside only in the daytime, and I never used my phone in the street. It was always somewhere in my pocket so that it's not seen. I was told that if you talk on the phone in the street, people can just grab it and run away. And there are also a lot of people on motorcycles. They can also just seize it and drive away. In DRC, many people do not have cell phones at all. And if they do, mostly they have old small phones, not modern smartphones. And the majority of people do not have mobile internet because it costs too expensive comparing to local salaries. So, I didn't shoot any videos while walking in the streets in Kinshasa. I decided not to take that risk and not to provoke people. You can see that almost all videos that I took there were shot from inside of the car. Once I was sitting in the front seat making some videos, there was a lot of traffic and one local guy got really mad and aggressive when he saw me filming. I stopped recording when he came up to the car, but still he was shouting angrily. Also, my colleagues told me a story about a guy that was working for our company before. He was making a video of Kinshasa City sitting in the front seat of the car and his side window was open. A policeman saw this, stopped the car, came up to him and asked if he had an authorization to take videos there. Then he just took his phone and never gave it back and they couldn't do anything about it. Also, we were told in our company that we should never use the local taxis in Kinshasa because they are not safe. My colleagues told me that there was one girl working in our company before me and once she went to a supermarket, bought quite a lot of stuff and decided to go home by taxi. She was sitting in the back seat. When they stopped in the traffic halfway home, two local guys ran up to the car from both sides, opened the side doors, grabbed her bags, everything she had, and ran away. And this was during the daytime. She said that most likely the taxi driver himself called some people he knew, saying that he has a white girl in the car. He called someone when he picked her up and he was speaking local African language that she couldn't understand. Also, all our cars at work had side windows covered with black film so that people outside couldn't see who is sitting at the back of the car. And all doors of our work cars locked automatically when the cars started movement to make sure that no one from outside can open them. Also, now and then in Kinshasa, you can see cars with armed security guards or policemen sitting in the back, especially at night. It is very common for people in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, when they see a white person, to come up and ask for money. And it's true not only for civil people, but also for policemen. When they see a white person, most likely they will try to somehow get money from you. Unfortunately, it looks like they are not there to protect you, but to take advantage of you. I heard from several experts working in Kinshasa that they never drive the car themselves, but prefer going everywhere with the local driver and sit in the back, because whenever policemen see a white driver, they pull your car right away. And they will not let you go until you give them some money. My colleagues said that it's better not to even sit in the front seat next to the driver, but to sit in the back so that you are not seen at all. They said that once the police stopped their car when they were coming home from work, and the policeman started checking their passports, visas, asking questions, it lasted half an hour, and in the end he let them go only when they paid him $50 or so. I had an expat friend in Kinshasa that had already lived and worked there for three years when I came there. And he also told me that he doesn't like driving the car himself in Kinshasa because policemen always stop him and it's very annoying. He wastes a lot of time and at the same time he said that you can solve any issue with them just giving them 2000 francs, which was 87 cents at that time. And this friend of mine was a funny guy with a good sense of humor. He would joke about everything and it seemed that he doesn't take local policemen in Kinshasa seriously. Sorry, I do not want to insult or offend anyone. I just want to show the topic from different angles, showing experiences of different people. So, you know, usually policemen in Kinshasa are very thin and my friend was saying jokingly, 
how they can protect anyone if they look like they themselves need someone to protect them. Also, there are policemen or armed guards almost everywhere in Kinshasa, in all parking places next to supermarkets and restaurants. So, let's say you come to a restaurant and leave your car at the parking lot. And when you come back, policemen expect money from you. They say that they guarded your car very well, or they kind of help you with their gestures when you have to move backward with your car, showing you the way, and they of course expect you to give them some money for their help, as if drivers cannot do it themselves. But as their salaries are very low, you can understand that. This friend of mine also told me one story, I don't know if it's completely true or not, but he said that one day he was driving the car himself through the city. The distance was not too long, but during this time policemen tried to stop him three times. He said that there were a lot of cars on the road, but once they saw him, a white guy, right away they took a stripe with spikes, I don't really know how it's called in English, the one they put in front of the car so that it cannot pass, and they ran to him with these road spikes right away to block him from movement. He said that every time he had to accelerate to bump into them before they put the spikes in front of his wheels and drive away. And that's it. Nobody chased him or something. And he said that in general, you can solve any issue in Kinshasa with money. When it comes to kidnapping, I spoke with a Belgian guy that was born in Kinshasa and lived there all his life. He told me that for all his life he heard that it really happened only two times and that people that were kidnapped were owners of huge chains of companies. They were really super rich. And of course, the people that kidnapped them wanted a lot of money to set them free. But he said that it's not something common there that happens a lot. I also want to tell you one sad story that I heard about travelers, a German couple that were traveling with their caravan in Africa and came to DRC. They decided to spend a night in their caravan somewhere not far from the forest. It was not in Kinshasa, but about 100 kilometers away from the city, next to some small town. And at night, some local people came to their caravan with knives to rob them. The man had only a pepper spray, he tried to protect them, but after the attack with knives, he didn't survive, and the woman was injured. Of course, all African countries are different. Some are safer than others. For example, my friend was working in Brazzaville, which is the capital of the neighboring African country with the same name, Republic of Congo. Kinshasa and Brazzaville are less than a mile apart, which makes them the closest capital cities in the world. There is only the Congo River between them. But my friend said that Brazzaville is safe, you can walk in the streets there even when it's dark, that you can use local taxis there and that you do not see any aggression from the local people. But Democratic Republic of the Congo is different. So if you come there, please make sure that you always stay in a safe place and I would say do not be afraid and do not exaggerate, but still take some safety precautions not to put yourself in risk. Thank you for watching this video and stay safe! Bye bye!